hello, everyone. This is uh, Byron King with Investor Intel, and we're going to do a little commodity corner here. We're going to talk with Joel Friedman of True Precious uh, Metals, a gold exploration company in um, Newfoundland. Uh, if you follow the gold space, you know that that whole Labrador, Newfoundland area is really hot. There have been some incredible uh, developments the last couple of years, and along comes True, T R U is how you spell true. And uh, Joel put this play together. Uh, Joel, tell the viewers and listeners, uh, give us a quick rundown of what is the company and you know what are, what are you doing? True Precious Metals is building out a diversified portfolio of inflation resistant natural resources assets uh, focused on Newfoundland at the moment. So certainly heavily precious metal, metals oriented at the moment. Uh, although actually based on this morning's news, which we'll get into, mm -hmm. we've also got some strong indications for copper on the property. So kind of an interesting energy metal slant to our project. Okay, great. Uh, now, about a week ago, you released some drilling results, which tells us that you've been drilling. And today, uh, as we speak, you have released uh, some geophysics results, which also, you know, uh, uh, highlight things. So we've got, we've got the hard material, you know, drill cores from the ground, and we've got the geophysics. And why don't you, uh, you know, tell the viewers and listeners out there what what did you find and what what's your model? What are you putting together here? So on April seventh, we put out a press release at our Woods Lake Gold Zone on our Golden Rose project. Maybe just for some uh, quick background, I guess for for anyone who's not familiar with the story, the the real thesis, the investment thesis and geological thesis for Golden Rose, which is our flagship property is it's right between two major gold deposits in Newfoundland. We have there's Matador mining with 840,000 ounces, right, you know, right here. Marathon gold with 4 million ounces right here. Mm -hmm. And we control the 45 kilometers of strike length between the two. Uh, so just about all the land between the two of them is, is true precious metals. So last week we put out, you know, obviously a great place to be. We're on the right street between the two biggest houses in the neighborhood. So last week we put out news on the, the one known gold zone on our Golden Rose project called the Woods Lake Gold Zone, we already knew from historical work and like the public already knew there is gold there. We succeeded in expanding the zone a bit. Um, we seem to be shaping up the, the beginnings of a bulk tonnage uh, target there or you know bulk tonnage zone perhaps. And so based on Woods Lake Gold Zone, I wore my gold sweater today. We have gold at the property. Um, you know, that alone is not deposit stage. It's not resource stage. What's good is it shows there, there's a, it's a fertile gold system that runs through our property. There's obviously already gold in one spot. And if we're anything like our neighbors, which geologically we look pretty similar, uh, there should be multiple other gold zones on the property. So that's kind of a good cementing of the value of the Golden Rose project. If you then look at the news this morning about our IP survey, and that's why I wore a copper colored watch today. Um, our IP survey, which is a geophysical survey, uh, and to be non-technical, it shows you what's under the ground. So at the surface, we already, you know, we've been picking up things at surface, soil samples, uh, rock samples, that there's gold and potentially copper and potentially silver at surface. I mean, those things, those, those minerals are actually present in what we picked up at surface. You know, we got to go prove it out by drilling under the ground. So before we go drill, we want to be kind of systematic in how we spend our exploration dollars. We ran this IP survey to give us the picture of what's beneath all the samples we collected. And we get this IP survey and it picks up all these anomalies, which show that there, there's something interesting beneath the surface. And what's, in, what's quite interesting about our press release is, uh, and today's news, there seems to be a very large IP anomaly beneath the surface that's coincident with all this gold and copper we're finding at the surface. So, you know, we're putting together a geological puzzle here, thanks to our, my technical colleagues, like we have a number of geologists on staff. So, you know, they're applying uh, rigorous geological science, which takes a lot of time. And you want to put together as many pieces of the puzzle before you go and spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars drilling. And based on what we found now at the surface and what we're starting to see beneath the surface, everything is adding up for there's something big beneath the surface. Exactly what it contains and how big that still is to be determined. But we're getting to a point where um, we, we have a good picture we're onto something. And soon it's going to be time to actually go drill it and kind of test what we really have there. Back up a, a, a few paces here. You've got a you've got a big deposit over here, and you got a big deposit over here, and you're in the middle. Like you said, you're on the right street between two really nice houses. Can you give a quick summary of what, why didn't these other two guys? Why didn't they pick up your 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 land package? And how did you wind up with this 
land package. It seems like you you found you found it in the right spot at the right time. So we 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 stand on the shoulders of giants in a sense. There have been a, a smattering of other smaller companies who are typically undercapitalized who have controlled bits and pieces of the land package we now own uh, over the last decade. So they've been doing you know here and there soil sampling work, drilling since about. 2010 or 2012, something like that. And companies have dropped it and they've optioned it to each other. You know, you should keep in mind that even though right now commodities are hot, certainly wasn't the case in 2012, 2014. Um, you know, really, really most of the last few years up until let's say 2019 or 2020 when commodities and inflation started to pick up. And so most of these companies, you know, there was no investor interest. They didn't have a lot of money in the treasury. Companies were forced to drop land and Golden Rose is a huge land package. It's 236 square kilometers. Yeah. So I mean, like it costs a lot of money to maintain. And so many of these companies were unable to keep the property in around 2019, so kind of right before, you know, COVID pandemic kicked in and then there was all the quantitative easing uh, on a monetary level. Um, a lot of the ground got dropped. Uh, there was only little bits and pieces kept by the previous holders. And so Altius, who's like a very large, sophisticated you know, TSX listed company, who is our second largest shareholder, they swooped in and accumulated as much of the property package as they could because they're very savvy. They play the long-term game like we're playing uh, and they pick up things in bad markets. So they kind of accumulated as much of this property package that's Golden Rose in 2019 to 2020. Um, they, they consolidated whatever they could and then they look for a junior to farm it out to because that's really their business model. And they do that typically for an equity stake. So Altius really consolidated the ground in 2019 and into 2020. They did a bit of surface work you know, they, they had the sense that it's, it's a highly prospective property. And so then we were bidding for it in late 2020 and into early 2021 when we signed the deal to acquire it. Um, and as part of the deal, uh, Altius got at the time what would have been a 20% stake in True. Um, there was not a lot of cash that we had to give them. In fact, almost none. It was heavily, we give them a big equity stake and we have to commit to millions of dollars of exploration. So that tells you that if they're not asking for a bunch of cash and it's heavily equity and exploration based, they believe in one, the property, and that it will be firmed up, you know, on geological level from exploration and two in our company, True Precious Metals, because they're betting on our equity stake, their equity stake in us to be worth something. Uh, and so they continue to be a large holder. And, and since uh, May of 2021, when we acquired the property, we rattled off about half a dozen additional property acquisitions to really consolidate the land package. Like I kind of look at this business a bit more like real estate. You know, you want to you want to buy up as much property as you can in order to develop a whole area. It's much more valuable than you owning fragments here and there. So we we optioned, staked, acquired a bunch of, of land around Golden Rose and contiguous with it in order to more than double the property size late last year. And that's proved to be a very good strategy because some of the areas now where we're seeing this gold and copper at surface and we're doing the IP survey is actually land we staked last year as soon as we acquired Golden Rose. Okay, so okay, that that actually tells the that tells a really nice story, uh, and you can look at it in a couple of different ways. That you know, the, the the Altius did you know a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, then they wanted to farm out, and this is a classic story. They farmed out a lot of their exploration to a management team and technical team, which happens to be you and your group, uh, which is a credit to you, obviously. Uh, and so, and our, and our geos for sure, and the, and the geos. I'm I, the, the technical group. That's the you know they can't can't do much without those guys. Uh, I say that as a geo myself. And so uh, uh, and so we're really in a sort of an early exploration phase. I think is a way to put it. Even though you've got these two great big neighbors on each on each end of you here, uh, and so you uh, you're putting together a geologic model. You're doing mapping. You're doing rock sampling. You're doing the geophysics, a little bit of drilling, you know, all of all of which uh, all of which makes a lot of sense. So now uh, you have Altius as a big shareholder. You have somebody else as a pretty big shareholder too, a fairly familiar name, if I recall. We do also uh, have Eric Scott as our largest shareholder, a Canadian mm -hmm. precious metals billionaire. Mm -hmm. I think for a company our size, whose market cap is only ten million bucks. Uh, to have a billion dollar TSX listed company and a billionaire precious metals investor as our two largest shareholders is a real vote of confidence in our entire management team, as well as the merit of the property we have. Yeah. So while we're, while we're talking about it, you just mentioned your market cap. Uh, tell the viewers out there, what's, what's your share structure? What do you have out there? And, uh, you know, what, and, you know, wh where, where are you listed? Things like that, just the basics. 
Sure. Uh, we're on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol TRU for true. We also mm-hmm. trade in the States on the OTCQB under the tickle, ticker symbol TRUIF. Mm-hmm. And actually, we're in Frankfurt uh, under the, I think the symbol is 706. Um, our share structure is we have six, right now we have about 67.9 million shares outstanding. So we tried to be fairly disciplined with the float while also being able to raise enough money to capitalize ourselves. We do have some options and warrants. Uh, most of those are currently out of the money, but those would be represent, you know, especially if we make a discovery, those would represent a good kind of built-in source of financing. Uh, we are well capitalized. Like we have enough in the treasury to ride us out for a while. If we want to go big on exploration, which is kind of my inclination, then at some point, you know, we will look to take an additional capital, but we also evaluate non-dilutive sources of financing, like transacting on our secondary properties in order to find non-dilutive ways to bring in cash. So that's certainly something on the radar. Mm-hmm. And, sure. uh, and then our management and our management and board own roughly 5% of the company uh, on this past Monday. So on the 11th, I actually went in the market. I bought over $100,000 of stock myself. You can check the public filings. So that's a real vote of confidence from the CEO. Um, on, on, I, and I'm actually not even the largest inside shareholder. I'm slightly behind our VP of property development, Barry Green. And basically he and I have been chasing each other, buying stock in the market over the last three to four months. Mm-hmm. So when you have your CEO and your top geologist, you know, accumulating stock in the market, that's probably a good sign that they really believe in what they're, they're working on. Uh, it's been great to speak with you. For viewers out there, uh, the true TRU precious metals, you can find it easily on the uh, web. They have, a, they have a website, they have a presentation, they have a file of news releases over the past couple of years, and you can track what's going on. Um, and with that, I thank you for your time. We wish you well, you and certainly your geologic team out in the field, uh, kicking those rocks and uh, IPing those, you know, uh, uh, I, you know, in, inducing, polarizing those, uh, those rock bodies underneath. And so uh, uh, thank, you for, thank you for everything. And again, good luck to everyone. Thanks for the opportunity, Byron.